Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about the differences between gasoline and hydrogen combustion engines. Now I'm sure plenty of you are familiar with how gasoline combustion engines work. Uh, however, hydrogen can also be used as a fuel source for combustion engines. In fact, you can use the same exact four strokes, intake, compression, power, and exhaust. And you can even use it with port injection. You can use it with direct injection. Uh, so a lot of similarities in using hydrogen as a fuel to a gasoline engine. In this this video we're going to be talking about eight key differences between gasoline and hydrogen when used in a combustion engine. As you can see it took up all of the whiteboard, quite a bit of information, but very cool stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, getting started let's look at the combustion process. So what is the combustion process? What is our fuel source? What are our byproducts? So we get started with two H2s, hydrogen, we add to that O2, oxygen, combustion occurs, and then our byproduct is two H2Os, in other words water. So water being our only byproduct and that's a huge advantage of a hydrogen engine in that its only emissions are going to be water. Perfect, clean, you still get the noise of combustion engines, the fun of combustion engines without the negative side of those poor emissions. But wait, not so fast. Unfortunately, with this combustion occurring and the heat uh, resulting from that combustion, your actual reaction is going to be something like H2 plus O2 plus N2 nitrogen leading to H2O and NOx. So these NOx emissions, unfortunately, are going to be the harmful emissions created from a hydrogen combustion engine. In theory, you know, you could have this perfect uh, only H2O uh, combustion occurring, but unfortunately, because the temperatures get hot enough, the nitrogen and the oxygen will react and form uh, nitrogen oxides. So on the other hand, gasoline combustion engines, you start with a hydrocarbon, so C number, H number, so you know for like octane it may be C8, H18, uh, you're going to add to that oxygen and nitrogen, and then your combustion byproducts are going to be CO2, H2O, and your nitrogen oxides. So the benefit of the hydrogen engine here is that we are eliminating uh, those carbon emissions. So we're not taking you know, carbon from underneath the ground, putting it into an engine, and then dispersing it into the air. There's no carbon introduced in this equation. Uh, unfortunately, you do still have those nitrogen oxide emissions. Next, let's talk about air fuel ratios because this is where hydrogen actually has a pretty big advantage because it has a very wide range of air fuel ratios where combustion can still occur. So it's stoichiometric ratio, meaning the ratio in which you burn all of the hydrogen in the cylinder and you burn all of the air in the cylinder, all of the oxygen, is 34 to 1. That is by mass. For a gasoline engine, it's about 14.7 to 1. And so the advantage here with hydrogen is that you can burn at an air fuel ratio as high as 180 to 1, so a very, very lean air fuel ratio there uh, versus in gasoline engines. The leanest I've ever seen is actually in the Mazda Skyactiv X engine, uh, and they're using some pockets of that uh, gasoline mixture at about 37 to 1, and that's using compression ignition spark, uh, controlled compression ignition to do that. So that's the highest in gasoline. Honestly, you generally won't see much higher than about 18 to 1 uh, air fuel ratio, and here with hydrogen, you're seeing as high as 180 to 1 air fuel ratio. So what are the advantages of this? Well, one of them is that it's very easy to start the engine. So if you think about a cold start with a gasoline engine, you generally have to inject more fuel so that you make sure that some of that fuel vaporizes, enough that vaporizes in order to get combustion started. With a hydrogen engine, it's very easy to do because you don't need much hydrogen, much uh, gaseous hydrogen in that combustion chamber in order for combustion to start. Also, running lean reduces fuel consumption. Generally speaking, by running lean, you're able to operate at a more efficient range. That's why Mazda uses such a high uh, air fuel ratio in that Skyactiv X engine that gets very good efficiency. And uh, some other advantages. The, by running lean with hydrogen, you can actually get back uh, one of its major drawbacks, which is these nitrogen oxide emissions. And so you're able to drop those NOx emissions uh, when you are running lean. But of course, you can't get anything by for free. And so by running with these very lean ratios, you know, once you start getting into this range, yes, you reduce your NOx emissions, but unfortunately, you are reducing your power. Next, let's get into ignition energy, and this really isn't that big of an advantage 
for hydrogen. So the ignition energy is the amount of energy required in order to start combustion. And for hydrogen, for a hydrogen air fuel mixture, it's about 0.02 millijoules versus about 0.24 millijoules for a gasoline engine. So an order of magnitude different there between them, meaning it's very easy uh, to use a spark and ignite a hydrogen air mixture. And so that's the advantage to it is that it's very easy to ignite. That's also the disadvantage because if you have a hot spot in that engine, uh, it could lead to misfiring, pre-ignition, that kind of thing. And because it can run at such you know, low air fuel ratios, uh, pretty much any random air fuel ratio in there, if it's next to something hot, it's going to be pretty easy for it to ignite. Uh, the advantage is you can use different types of ignition sources if you wanted, like a hot wire or a glow plug, uh, kind of like a diesel engine may use to get ignition started. Uh, that's difficult for controlling timing, uh, so you would use something like a spark so that you could uh, control the timing, but if you perhaps did have a compression ignition hydrogen engine, uh, then perhaps you could use a hot wire or a glow plug to get things started initially and then just run it off compression after that. Uh, more common to use a spark uh, in order to have combustion with a hydrogen engine. Next, let's talk about flame velocity. So this is a big advantage for hydrogen because it is significantly faster uh, than gasoline in how quickly that flame travels. And that's ideal. The ideal engine would have instant combustion, uh, all of it burning at once. And because hydrogen has that fast flame propagation, uh, that's more ideal because it means all of your pressure is created at the very top before the piston has moved down. So you get the maximum amount of useful work out of it. Uh, so just kind of comparing here with gasoline, uh, it's multiple times faster uh, at traveling uh, versus gasoline uh, through that air fuel mixture, that flame traveling outward. And so that means more power and that means uh, greater efficiency. It also means you could operate at higher engine speeds uh, because that flame, you wouldn't be limited by the flame speed itself. Now, unfortunately, uh, there's another drawback. So we want to run lean, right? Because that's efficient and it means we won't have as many nitrogen oxide emissions. Uh, but unfortunately, by running lean, you then start to reduce that flame velocity quite a bit. So it does have a very high flame velocity when you're operating at that stoichiometric ratio of 34 to one, about 34 to one. Uh, but unfortunately, once you start getting towards this leaner end, combustion does take significantly longer. Next, let's get into the auto ignition temperature. And here, hydrogen has an advantage over gasoline as well. So you can think of the auto ignition temperature as the temperature at which if you had that perfect air fuel mixture, if you bring that mixture to this temperature, it will automatically combust. You don't need a spark or anything like that. Just the heat alone will force it to combust. And so by having a higher auto ignition temperature for hydrogen uh, and air, it's going to be about 500 degrees Celsius. For gasoline and air, it's going to be about 230 to 280. 80 degrees Celsius, so quite a bit higher. You can think of that uh, as an octane number. A hydrogen's uh, fuels octane number is going to be over 120 versus in the you know 91 to 99 ish region for a gasoline fuel. And so what this means is if you were to look at, you know, how much could you compress this air fuel mixture before it ignited, you could compress that hydrogen and air mixture more than a gasoline engine. And that means you can use a higher compression ratio. So by using a higher compression ratio, you make more power and you are more efficient. It also means you can advance timing more. You have more flexibility with timing with hydrogen fuels and it means it will be more resistant to knock because of that high octane number. Now remember, this trait of it does mean it's less likely to have knock or pre-ignition occur, uh, but there are other traits about it that do mean that, you know, knock could be a problem. For example, the ignition energy. So, you know, a, a hot spot could cause a misfire because it only requires a very small amount of energy, even though it has a low auto ignition temperature. So there are pros and cons here. Uh, good on an auto ignition temperature side, not necessarily great from an ignition energy side uh, because a very small hotspot could cause combustion to occur. Our next point is diffusivity. So what this means is how quickly after you inject that fuel does it spread out and create a nice uniform mixture within that combustion chamber. And this is a big advantage for hydrogen because it has a very high diffusivity. And as a result, that means you get a uniform mixture very quickly when you inject fuel. That's great if you're using direct injection. Uh, if you do have port injection, you know it's gonna have enough time to make sure that mixture flows with gasoline or with hydrogen. Uh, but for a direct injection application, really cool that you can have 
have that high diffusivity, get the hydrogen to go all around that combustion chamber very quickly and have that nice even mixture. And so by having that nice even mixture, uh, you're going to have complete combustion occur, which is efficient and it's predictable. Uh, it also allows you to have faster engine speeds because that fuel is spreading out very quickly combined with your high flame velocity. And it also reduces the danger from leaks. So let's say you did have a hydrogen leak somewhere on your fuel line. Well, that, that hydrogen, as it's leaking out, is going to start spreading out very quickly. And so it's very quickly going to get outside of its air-fuel ratio range in which combustion could occur. So it'll spread out very quickly. If you do have a leak somewhere in your fuel system, uh, the good news is it probably you know, has a, a reduced likelihood of causing you know, a, a thermal event, a fire, uh, bad things to happen because it will spread out so fast. Our next point is quenching distance, and the quenching distance is the distance between where you have that air fuel mixture igniting, where that flame extinguishes relative to where your wall is. So the distance from the wall at which your flame extinguishes. For hydrogen, this number is pretty low, just 0.6 millimeters. Uh, for gasoline, it's a bit longer of a distance, two millimeters. And so with hydrogen, you're going to have combustion occur all the way to that wall, a little bit closer to the wall. With gasoline, it's not going to get quite as close. So kind of the advantage there is that you're going to you know burn all of that air fuel mixture with the hydrogen uh, the downside of it is it means you know that hydrogen combustion can work its way through some pretty small crevices and so for example if you were to have for some reason combustion occurring with that intake valve open perhaps uh, due to valve timing overlap or something like that you could have backfire occur because it might be easier for that hydrogen combustion to pass through the distance between that valve and your combustion chamber where it's open so for the port you know, let's say you just have a, you know, two millimeter gap. Well, the gasoline's not going to travel through it, uh, but the hydrogen combustion could actually travel through it. Uh, so a difference there in quenching distance, a unique property uh, of both fuels. Now, our final point here is going to be talking about hydrogen's low density, which is unfortunately a disadvantage it has and why gasoline does make sense for use in combustion engines. Uh, so this is talking about density from a volume standpoint. How much energy do you have uh, relative to how much volume does that energy take up, uh, your fuel source? Uh, so starting off, let's talk about what's going on in the combustion chamber and then apply it to the car as a whole. So looking in the combustion chamber, unfortunately, if you were to have a naturally aspirated port injected uh, hydrogen engine, your air fuel ratio by volume is 2.4 to 1. So that means about 30% of the space within that combustion chamber is going to be taken up by hydrogen, which only leaves about 70% of the space uh, left over for oxygen, for air. Now in a gasoline engine, you're only going to take up about 1 to 2% of the space in that uh, combustion chamber, and about 98% of that space can be used as air, which means you've got significantly more oxygen in there, which means you can burn more fuel, which means you can make more power. Uh, so relative to the size, you can make more power there, uh, assuming you're running a naturally aspirated port injected engine. Now you can of course use a high pressure direct injection, inject, uh, force more hydrogen into that scenario so you do use more air and thus make more power. Uh, but just looking at it from a naturally aspirated standpoint, you're generally going to be making less power uh, combining that with port injection. Uh, and that's as a result of having to take up so much space for hydrogen rather than air itself. Now hydrogen does have an advantage relative to its weight, and so that's why it's used in rockets. Hydrogen as a fuel is one of the best as far as energy to weight. It's not one of the best as far as energy to volume. So if you think about a rocket, it can be gigantic. If it doesn't weigh much like hydrogen fuel, it's not all that heavy, but it has a ton of energy in it, then it's great for sending that rocket out into space. Obviously you want to minimize weight on a rocket. In a car, you kind of want to maximize available passenger space. So if you're using a hydrogen tank and taking up all of the trunk room, taking up all the passenger room, then the car becomes less practical. So with gasoline, you have this higher energy density, so it doesn't take up as much space in the vehicle, and as a result, uh, you have you know, a better passenger compartment, more cargo space, that kind of thing. So if you look you know, at a car like the Toyota Mirai, uh, which uses hydrogen, it doesn't use a combustion engine, but it uses a fuel cell. If you look at a vehicle like that, it's got these massive hydrogen tanks that are required, and so that's a bit of a disadvantage for a hydrogen engine, is that you're going have very large fuel tanks uh, relative to how far that fuel can get you. Uh, so thank you all so much for watching. If you do have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below.